Hey everyone, and we are back for our third installment of the Animal Artists Collective. And it's kind of felt like forever since we started our normal every other month schedule. We have two more special guests joining us this month, so make sure to go check out Kat from Meow Meow Kapow and Amy from Amy Howard Art. And don't miss out on everyone else's videos in the collective as well. Everyone's channel links will be down below, and I will also have a playlist if you want to binge on all the videos we've produced so far. So make sure to check that out. As a friendly reminder, every original made for the collective will be for sale and at least 50% of the proceeds will go directly to animal conservation charity of the artist choice. I will be giving it to the Wetlands International uh, charity for this piece and I will have a link down below so you can check them out and give a donation yourself if you are interested. This month, you guys chose for us to focus on an animal within the rivers and wetlands biome, or biomes. <laughs> I decided to focus on a few more than one animal and wanted to create a piece that represented the vast variety of wetland and migratory birds. That is why we have eight different kinds of birds represented here in my piece, and that is only a very small, small number of the types of birds that inhabit our planet. I'll tell you a bit more about each bird later on, but I mostly wanted to focus this voiceover on discussing my process and the wetland biome in general as well as my love of birds. I know many in the collective discuss certain specific animals in depth and I wanted my video to be a bit more of an overview and tell you about wetlands in general since I personally live by quite a few large preserved wetlands myself being in the San Francisco Bay Area. So let's talk a bit about this piece first. I used my Schmincke watercolor palette. These are the watercolors I picked up overseas when I was in Europe the end of last year in London. And I am working on B Company 100% cotton watercolor paper. This is a piece of the six inch by nine inch paper that you can get. Uh, I actually got mine from Michaels. It's really fairly affordable for cotton paper, which is really fantastic. After my recent collab with Denise of In Liquid Color, make sure to go check that out if you missed it, uh, where I painted in more realistic colors. I wanted to play with that a little bit more for this piece, mostly because I wanted each bird to be recognizable and when I was planning this out, I sort of had the idea of this looking like a sort of poster you would see hung up in the office of a national park or something, uh, maybe even a cover illustration for a wetlands bird book. When I thought of this as potential freelance work, it actually seemed really fun. So I was excited to add this piece to my portfolio and maybe do similar pieces in the future. I wanted the piece to be really dynamic and show how much life there was in the wetland areas, both with bird life and plant life. I actually included some pops of color with the greenery and florals that you can find in this type of biome. I added marsh marigold, water plantain, swamp milkweed, New England aster, and fringed, fringed sedge. <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna have a fun time with all the names of the birds as well. Uh, when researching, I picked out these eight birds based on how pretty I found them. This would likely not be the most accurate image as some of these birds reside mostly in the Europe or Asia areas of the globe, but many live either globally or mostly in Northern American regions. In the middle, we have a great blue heron. The upper right is a kingfisher, which side note, our guest Amy is doing an incredibly realistic portrait of the kingfisher for her video this month. And I really encourage you guys to go check out her video after mine because I am really excited to see the process. I saw a few 
previews and it was really exciting to see how detailed she got with her piece because I really didn't want to focus on any one bird in particular and so I really didn't go into too much detail especially since this is a smaller piece and I was really excited to see that she went into so much detail with this incredibly beautiful bird so make sure to go check that one out. To the right of the great blue heron we also have a black crowned night heron. Under that one we have the great crested greb or grebe I think it's Greb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, underneath that one, we have a red breasted mer mergenser. Mer mergenser. I should probably look up how to say these before I do my recording. <laughs> uh, at the very bottom, we have a common coot. And on the left, we have the northern pintail just above the coot. And above that one, we have the American Avocet. I think I said those right. I hope I said those right. I am sure you guys will correct me in the comments. But uh, I definitely really wanted to have a variety of birds. And so I looked up a lot of different kinds that tend to reside in the wetland biome, especially um, that are migratory a lot if not all of these birds are migratory, which means that they typically will fly south for the winter where it is warmer, a little bit closer to the equator and will fly north for the rest of the year. When I was planning this piece out, I really wanted to draw a duck. That's kind of how things started. <laughs> uh, and I was thinking maybe a duck or two, either river or wetland kind of ducks. And I really wanted to do ducks because I have always loved ducks for most of my life and have actually owned uh, white, more common ducks years back and they were really fun pets and kind of like dogs, if you can imagine that. Um, let me know down below if anyone else has had really kind of interesting uh, pets. I, I was not living on a farm, I was living in uh, suburban, very suburban area in the city in Los Angeles, <laughs> but we ended up having quite a large backyard and a pool that our ducks absolutely love to swim in and they were super fun to have. Um, if anyone's interested in hearing more about my pet adventures growing up, I've had quite a lot of different kinds of animals as pets. So I might make a video about that, or uh, I guess I could maybe make an illustration of them. That would be fun. Anyway, back to this video. Uh, I also wanted to mention, I wanted to include this adorable coot at the very bottom because they're so small and adorable. And I love seeing them in the bay and I you see them in a lot of like lakes and ponds and things like that. They're fairly common and I just, love how closely their name is to the word cute <laughs> that I just I love that for some reason I'm always excited to see coots in the wild. Um, as I was researching uh, the wetlands and kind of what we can do for conservation I actually found out that uh, most if not all of these birds are completely not endangered at all they're of least concern uh, and that was really fantastic to hear. And the more I read about it, I realized that there have been quite a lot of conservation measures as well as laws passed in the past that have both globally and nationally here in the US that have really protected birds and protected their home. And I found that so incredibly encouraging. I know a lot of the time, we focus on these incredibly endangered animals and it just it can be so sad some of them are even so far gone that we will likely see their extinction in our lifetime and it feels really discouraging to even want to give when you feel like it's almost a lost cause and with a lot of other global warming and other natural things going on that feel very kind of out of our hands it was really encouraging for me to see that what conservation has actually done for these animals. Um, a few of these 
uh, I guess birds in general in wetland areas have been closer to extinction and that has been mostly reversed um, due to the feather and bird trade uh, in the past and that has been greatly changed because of conservation and specifically the Migratory Bird Treaty Act of, I think it's 19, I read one word, one place it was 1916 and another place 1918, but this law in particular, um, or this treaty has made it unlawful to hunt and or capture these kinds of birds. And I can tell you specifically that living in the Bay Area, a lot of our, the areas around the Bay, specifically where the water is, the marshes and wetland parts are completely off limits. Uh, sometimes you can walk on a trail, but there are signs everywhere about not disturbing the habitat, um, not walking off the path, or not even having access to that area in general. And it is fairly well protected and that is just so encouraging for me um, and I was so happy to be able to present that and show um, how conservation can help and how we can reverse things and we can help these animals on our earth. I really wanted this video to highlight what we can do and what we have done in the past to help the animals we love on our planet and be an encouragement for you to donate or give back, uh, maybe even with your time, to some of these organizations, um, whether it be for wetlands or some of these other biomes and other uh, areas where animals are being hurt a little bit more, um, and realize that you really can make a difference and help out and uh, really have these beautiful birds stay longer on our earth. I was excited to present this topic and uh, this and, and present these beautiful birds in a fairly accurate color palette and really show off how colorful nature is all on its own. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed this piece and will please check out all of the other artists. We have a total of eight participants this month and it's really exciting to see our little community grow and thank you guys so, so much for all of the support we've been getting from all of you. Uh, make sure to check out all of the links down below, both for the other artists as well as there will be a link to vote on our next uh, biome so we'll have a poll over on our Facebook page so make sure to click that link and vote on which biome you would like for us to focus on for the next round which will be in two months so that will be July <laughs> that'll July will be our next uh, launch of videos and thank you again so much to our new guests and everyone who's participating um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to check out the links for the Wetland International uh, charity group as well. And I will also have a link to this original piece. Uh, I may make prints of it if there's enough interest and part of those prints will likely go to charity as well. Uh, so let me know down below if you're interested in prints, but the original will be up on Etsy, so make sure to go check that out if you're interested. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're here and you're enjoying this type of content and some of the other stuff I do. I would love to have you along this art journey with me and to be a part of the community. All right, that's it for me today. Thank you so, so much for watching and you have a creatively fulfilled day and I will see you next time. Bye guys.